young TV performer whose recording of Muck Artie Park is a Motown favorite, Soupy Sales. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Right now, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce you to a beautiful young lady who is not only a brilliant actress, but she is a wonderful author. Uh, she is better known in our business as Joanna Barnes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And on my left, the handsome Mr. Hal Holbrook. to dig this now. Lay it on us, huh? All right, Arlene is dressed in off-white and blue. It's my special pleasure to bring her to you, Miss Francis. How oh. about that? Yeah, that was a point. <laughs> oh, that really touched me. Well, a uh, great many people are moving into Washington these days. But one very nice fellow has moved out of Washington and into the here, and it's Wally Bruner. I guess we really shouldn't say it was part of the changing of the guard, though, should yeah. we, Arlene? <laughs> but welcome to What's My Line. Because during the next 30 minutes, you're going to meet some interesting people who are engaged in the most unusual occupations, and we hope will baffle this panel of experts. And in addition, the panel will face a mystery celebrity guest just a bit later on. But now, panel, are we ready? Yes. 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 All right, let's meet our first challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? Jay Green. Mr. Green, where are you from? Brooklyn. Very good. Panel, may I tell you that Jay Green deals in a service. And now let's show the audience just what his line is. <clears throat> Panel, may I remind you again that Mr. Green is self-employed. It's a service. And let's begin with Soupy Sales. Uh, Mr. Green, uh, this service that you provide, could I come to you for this service? Yes, you can. Uh, would uh, Joanna be come to you for the service? Yes, she may. Uh, when you do this service, do you do it inside? Yes. Do you ever do it outside? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, do you deal with uh, uh, human beings? Yes. If we're going to him for pizza... Well, you're not letting me, you haven't finished yet. What am I, no. chop liver? You may not be a human being. No conferences permitted. That's right. Well, no, well, I, well, I want to explain. I'll, uh -huh. I'll explain that to you. Uh, does that, uh, I mean, do you ever deal with anything other than humans? No. No, that's one down, Joanna Barnes. Yeah, you could yeah, have been a dog yeah. trainer. <laughs> no. Uh, Mr. Green, can you perform this service for more than one person at a time? Yes, I can. Do you wear anything different from what you have on now when you do it? No, not particularly. So that's two down. We go to Hal Holbrook. Do you go to the uh, to the person's home to perform this service? Sometimes. Sometimes, and can I they... would say it's, it's on rare occasions. On rare occasions, but is it is it uh, more ordinary for them to come to see you at your? That's correct. Place? Do you have a separate place of uh, business out of which you operate? Yes. When someone goes to you, are they? Uh, uh, when they, you perform your service, does it uh, help their appearance in any way or affect their appearance in any way? No. No. That's three down. Arlene. Uh, 
Do you uh, instruct or advise them in any way? Yes, I do. Uh, would you say that uh, they benefit from your instruction and advice? Yes. Do they learn something? Yes, they do. Would you be termed an instructor? That's correct. Uh, is the instruction in uh, something other than a physical activity? No. No. That's four down, soupy sales. Then it is something physical. <laughs> How I do it. Uh, when, when you uh, are giving this instruction, do you ever touch the people? I think that while there might be on rare occasions that he would touch someone, I don't think it's an essential part of the service he provides, so you got to know, and that's five down, and we go to Joanna. This physical thing that you do with these folks, Soupy and me included, uh, is it anything in the realm of athletics or dancing? Might be loosely termed someplace in that area. Uh, well, it can be anything, you know, from calisthenics to uh, yoga. Um, you just eliminated two of them, didn't you, Joanna? <laughs> Pretty sneaky. <laughs> That's kind of sneaky. Well, I just looked to see if a little look of recognition flashed across your face. Um, is it anything that is taught to music? Sometimes. But not essentially. Do you have, is there rhythm involved? Definitely, yes. If I do it long enough, am I going to get tired? Yes. <laughs> uh, Fifteen seconds. I don't know that. Stop pushing me. <laughs> um, you, but it's not dancing per se, is that correct? Correct. All right, so it's something you teach people to do something. Is this a sport? No. No, that's six down. Does anyone have a guess? Uh, is it in the yoga family? No. Standing on the head or breathing? Is it head? in the calisthenic family or weight, weight reducing? I'm juggling. going to flip all the... Yes! Yes? What? He teaches he juggling. But even though Arlene made the wild guess and hit Jay, we're going to flip all the cards and declare you the winner. But Jay Green owns and operates, I think, the only juggling school in New York City that is open to the general public. And who comes to you to learn juggling? Uh, ordinary people are, who want to take it up as a hobby and uh, people in the entertainment field. How did you get into it, Jay? I saw somebody juggling and I taught <laughs> myself over a period of 20 years. <laughs> And it was a hobby for you that has now become a profession, a profession in business. Is it hard to learn? The average person could learn in an, an hour lesson. In one could hour? Could learn to juggle, yes. Well, you know, I always liked the part of a juggling act where two performers start throwing the Indian clubs, you know, back and forth at each other. Is it dangerous? No, not really. Why? Well, the clubs look so heavy. Have you, you well, have I, a new twist on that I've act? I've developed a club that is made of plastic, and it uh, can't hurt anybody. Plastic yes. Indian clubs. Uh, well, can you still juggle with something like that? Yes. What, uh, is, the main, what is the major thing, talent or, or facility that a person has to have to learn to juggle? I would say timing and rhythm. I know a guy that used to juggle 12 knives, and then after a week of that, he juggled fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you brought some Indian clubs with you, I know. And would you show us just a sample of juggling? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jay. <laughs> about the Indian clubs going yeah. back and forth? Soupy? Hal, come on up. Oh, boy. Hi, Mr. Green, how are you? I think the two of you about over there someplace, and the back I'll give a little room here. And Jay, you just take over and show them what how to do it. What's going to happen? Hold up your left hand like this. Left hand? Right, not like that, like that. Like this. Right. Okay. Just close your hand like that. Good, good. I'd like to thank the Academy for making this award possible, <laughs> and I'd like to thank my producer, Gil Fates. Oh, oh, did I throw that? Okay, you ready? 
always wanted to throw something at me. Next. Hey, that's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. But we have something else here to try, too. They always do that. Let's give up the Indian clubs for a moment. Okay. Jay, you, I don't know what these are going to be used for, but perhaps you can show us. Oh, I hold this. Very can you hold up your finger for a minute? My finger? Just like yes. this. Don't move, man. Ooh, Ooh that's good. Yeah. Huh? Oh, you, you remember like... me, the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> yeah. Get my feet wet. Oh, okay. Now watch out, sir. Okay. Keep your eye on the ball. Okay. Dun 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 dun. It's the Ed Sullivan show. Keep your eye on it. All right, Super. So yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jay. We enjoyed it. Hal, we'll be back to meet another challenger as Watch My Line continues. Well, we're off to a pretty good start. Arlene, that was a wild guess at the very last split <laughs> yeah. second. But that's when I'm wildest. That's when you're the wildest, at the split second. So. <laughs> but let's go on and meet our next challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? June? Poplar. Miss Poplar, where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. That's a very nice part of the country, isn't it? The it Hillbach is Hotel yeah. and Harry Truman's hometown is yes. right nearby. Panel, may I tell you that June Poplar is in the insurance business. And now let's show the audience just what kind of insurance she sells. May I remind you that Miss Poplar is salaried. It's a service we're after, and we'll begin with Hal Holbrook. Uh, do you insure humans or whoops, like animals? No, I can't say that. Wait a minute. Do, do, you, do you insure human beings? No. That's one down. Arlene. But that opened a nice bowl of gravy there. Do you insure animals? Is that animals? Yes. Uh huh. Miss Poplar, I think, turned to you and said, are those animals? Is that something unusual in the animal kingdom that you insure? No, I don't no, think so. No, I don't think so. That's two down. And you're reading lips again, Arlene, yes, and that's very bad. Soupy. Well, she insures animals. Well, the, how many, oh, you've got to find out what the animal is? Yes. I know a crocodile that didn't keep up his payments. <laughs> They're the worst, probably, to be insured. Uh, I know a mink who insured his coat. <laughs> I wish I'd have said that. I would. I wish I had too. Uh, wait. No, we've got to find out the animal. Is it a four-legged animal? No. That's three down. Joanna Barnes. Is it in the fish family? No. That's four down. How? Uh, does this, uh, well then, I take it that this animal transports itself on land. Yes. Yes. Rather than in the air? Uh, yes. Occasionally might be in the air. Occasionally. In other words, this animal can also fly. It has two legs, but it does not swim. Does not swim. Does not swim. Can you eat it? Oh, yes. Is it good tasting? Yes. Uh, is, it, uh, is it scarce enough or desirable enough so that there are certain seasons when you can kill it for eating purposes? No. No. That's five down. Arlene. Is it an animal that one might see in a farmer's yard? Yes. Is it an animal that is particularly uh, enjoyed at Thanksgiving time? Could be, I'd say. Could be. Oh, well then, uh, if you say it could be, I can rule out a turkey. It's not a turkey that you, uh, that you insure. That's right. It is not a turkey, right? It is not a turkey. Uh, do you insure... A fowl of some sort? Yes. What's fowl besides a turkey and a chicken? I think that's about it. A, a chicken. A chicken, that's it. <laughs> it is a rather unusual occupation.
occupation insurance for chickens, and Miss Poplar handles insurance for the, is it Altman Singleton and Company? Yes. Of Kansas City, specializing mostly in poultry insurance. And when a poultry breeder buys his... Well, they buy no. the old chicks. Tell us about it. Yeah, but not diseases. No. No, mainly fire, windstorm, oh. cyclone, tornado, rain. Collision. Transportation perils. Mm -hmm. Or if a chick runs away with something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty big business, and I, I know most farmers are interested in it. But this does not cover disease. <laughs> Only no, a casualty disease. loss then yes. of sorts, of mm -hmm. a fire, lightning, or heavy rain, or a flood, or something of that yes. nature. Well, it's very interesting. You almost dumped the panel. I thought we had them for a moment, Ms. Poplar, but thank you so much for joining us on What's My Life. We'll be back to meet another challenger as What's My Line continues. Now we've reached that very special part of What's My Line, the time we meet our mystery guest, panel of the blindfolds in place. Hey, sure, yes. Mr. Brenner. All right, mystery challenger, would you enter and sign in, please? the identity of our mystery guest, and let's begin with Arlene. Thank you, Wally. Uh, mystery guest, are you best known for your work in television? Mm-hmm. Oh, Soupy what? Sales. <laughs> uh, are you a man? Mm-hmm. That's a yes. Joanna Barnes. <laughs> I see. One of the Vienna Choir Boys. Uh, do you have a regular series on television? Mm-hmm. Hell. Does your series uh, come on in the evening hours rather than daytime? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's in between? Sometimes daytime, sometimes nighttime. Arlene? Well, can one judge from that that it is a syndicated program? Mm-hmm. Oh, Super. swell. <laughs> Have I ever been on your show? Mm-hmm. I know who it is. Joanna Barnes. <laughs> no, it isn't Joanna Barnes. <laughs> Okay, Soupy. It's Steve Allen. It is. That's it. Hi, gang. Hello there, fellas. Right. What are you doing over there? Come on over here. You ought to feel at home here. Yes, it feels very much like going back to the old school or something of that sort. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much where I got started. Local boy oh. makes good. Yes. And I still haven't learned to stop hitting the microphone <laughs> all these years. Great memories of you here, Steve. Well, thank you, Wally. Like bigger uh, than a bread box, which was your phrase. Yes, yeah, that, that, that's odd how that got into the, the national vernacular. I think my most um, ready recollection of, of the years I spent working on that panel over there, the very happy years, were one night uh, sitting next to Arlene, as was usually the case, when we uh, had either identified or not the mystery guest, as the case may be. I think we had missed it, I forget. And I took off my mask. And I still didn't know who she was. <laughs> <laughs> and now I don't even remember it. So. You know what? I tell you, we got to... That happens once in a while, Steve. We have, we have to tell Steve that uh, not too long ago, we had a lady on, and her occupation was making bread boxes. And somebody said, is it bigger than a bread box? And like, a, uh, you know... One interesting thing, uh, Subi, about the fact that that's become a kind of a little joke phrase is that when I first said that on the show, I had no intention whatever of being amusing. We were, remember, Eileen yes, trying to decide the size of an object, and it occurred to me it might be about that big, and the only object that came into my mind about that size was a bread box. But you know, they come in different sizes now, Steve? <laughs> oh, bread boxes? Shucks. I didn't realize that. They come in two loaf sizes, four loaf sizes, six loaf sizes. I'm serious. You're putting me on? We got no. a lecture on it we today. We had a lecture on it. Johnny Olson gave us a lecture one no, day. No, the gentleman who made the, the gentleman. Bread, bread boxes. No, Johnny delivered the lecture. He though. modeled That's the right. bread boxes. He modeled the <laughs> right. bread boxes. Right. Uh -huh. But uh, your show is doing well. You're going another year, I hear? Yes, we're just, just starting on our second year. And uh, it's, it's great fun. It's basically the same thing I did on the old Tonight Show. This is the third time I've done this program. I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. In the day and age of a of, of lot of the sameness and mediocrity, it's great to have somebody like Steve Allen on who is uh, Who is original. doing the same yeah, mediocrity. Yeah. Steve, I think most of us, if not 
about all of us have long been fans of yours. You're so versatile. I loved the the piano. Uh, Thank you, Wally. The humor. And what is this thing you... The, the melodia? No, the melodia. Or what oh, it, the melodica. The melodica, yes. Yeah. I just, just did an album with that, as a matter of fact. And uh, I think we're all delighted to see the Steve Allen show back on the air again. And I hope it continues for a long time. Thank long you so time. much. And our best to Jane, because she was on the show a few years Now, panel, it's time for Honest Answers to questions submitted by our studio audience. The first one to Hal Holbrook from Randy Cannon, it looks like. It says, I'm the boy who met you in the street. I called you Mr. Holbrook. Would it have been all right if had I called you Hal? Sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Hi. Mr. Hal. To Soupy. Yeah. Do you like children? Yes, I do. I love them. Your own? I, mean, my own. I have two of my own. But you do love children. Sure I do. Okay, here's one from jo to Joanna. What was the name of the series you did with Peter Falk? Trials of O'Brien. Right. Arlene, what is your opinion of the micro mini dress and would you wear one? I would if I could, ma'am. I would if I could. <laughs> <laughs> and Soupy, how many records did your album The Mouse sell? Oh, I think it was close to a million. I know I've got about 800,000 of them at home myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, panel, for your honest answers. <laughs> That's it for today. Won't you join us tomorrow on What's My Line? This is Johnny Olson speaking for What's My Line, a Mark Woodson, Bill Totman production.